Hi, and welcome back to another episode of Can This Marriage Be Saved? I'm Rivka Slatkin. I'm Shlomo Slatkin. Today we're here with you to talk about goals. And, and having a vision for your relationship, kind of plotting out the future. A lot of couples spend time focusing on the past, wanting to make the present better, but also we need to think about the future. Um, because this is where a lot of couples get, when they're thinking about the future of their relationship, they're not really sure if they kind of see eye to eye. And having discussions about kind of what a couple wants and a future vision is really important. Yeah, it's very easy to think, oh, we just don't have anything in common anymore. We're just too different. We want different things for our relationship. And I know that in our workshops that we do quarterly, the ones in Baltimore, uh, a lot of times couples will do this exercise where they're each writing their own uh, goals for the future. And then we have them switch books and we say, well, does it look like you're on the same page? And a lot of times they're like, oh, we actually want the same things. We just thought we didn't, or we had so much toxicity in the relationship until this point. We just thought we were way too different. Yeah, a lot of couples get to the point where they they don't think they have the same goals. They, they don't think they see eye to eye anymore. And this exercise does help them. It reassures them, it gives them hope that, wow, you know, like we really do want the same thing. That's pretty good. Uh, Sometimes it can be a tricky, ex tricky exercise for couples because sometimes there's an issue that they don't agree on or one person wants. Then the question is, okay, let's talk about these things and let's figure out what do you mean by that? Sometimes people have, I mean, I had, a, I remember many, many years ago, I was working with a young couple and one of them wrote something down and a few things and the other was very disturbed by it because it brought them back to other issues they had earlier on in their relationship. And once they dialogued about it and clarified what it meant, it was a lot less uh, scary. So it's important when you're trying to do this exercise to be able to talk about it and clarify what you mean. So like, for example, you could say like, uh, we communicate openly and honestly. Well, that may mean two different things to two different people. So it's important, even if you wrote the same thing, what do you mean by that? What does that look like? Really flesh it out. And when you flush it out, it can help, number one, help reassure you that you want the same thing. It also give you clarity about what you, what you both want and what you can do to get there. This is important. And you know, a lot of times we're focused on what we don't want in a relationship. And this is really kind of a, a shift to be able to focus on what is it that you want, not what is it that I don't want. Because when you focus on what you don't want and what you know, you know, you're moving away from something, it's not going to help you get get it. When you focus on something more positive, what you want, it helps you attract that more into your life. And it's interesting, I had a couple once, they just, they did this exercise, they called the relationship vision exercise. They wrote down, they both, basically the way it starts is you both write down what you want for your relationship. So in our relationship vision, in my relationship vision, we get along peacefully. We have fun together. We are loving parents. Um, we take walks, whatever it is. And they wrote it down and then they shared the joint vision. They both share their individual visions. We created the joint vision. So some of them were identical. We kept them, the ones that were similar. We, we kind of wordsmithed it to make sure everybody agreed on the wording. The ones that we weren't sure about, we talked about if we didn't want to add it, we can put that down. Like we can make a little line underneath and put it at the bottom, like, you know, our relationship potential, maybe one day we'll get there. And they wrote it down. And they said, except for like, except for one thing, we are financially independent. Everything came true. And they didn't even, it's not even like they were looking at it every day. It wasn't even that they were like working on specifically, but because they were intentional, because they were working on the relationship, they saw that months later after putting the effort, they achieved most of the things on their list. Mm, wow. So part of it is, there's two ways of doing this exercise. One, one aspect is just the fact that you co-create this vision it's important it's like if you want to get somewhere you need to have a roadmap where do you want to go just putting that energy out there that this is what i want helps you come closer to that even if you don't specifically work on every little thing on the other hand some people like to actually work on it you know let's read it once a week let's embody it let's try to figure out okay this week we're going to work on our communication next week we're going to work on having fun together whatever the things are so that's important so as I said before, attracting what you want, 
Couples that are in a negative state, they're more focusing on like, we don't fight. But so instead we want to change that around. We get along peacefully. So you want to write it purely positive, reframe it. And then we also, and when you reframe it, it empowers you. And then we also want to say it in the present tense. So for some people, this seems a little bit strange. You know, we get along peacefully while we're fighting like cats and dogs. But if you write, we will get along. Like, yeah, like one day, like, like really, I don't really believe that this will happen. You know, it's a pipe dream. Uh, one day, you know, we get, we will get along. We will have fun together. We will travel. No, you write it down now as if it's happening. Because if you write it, you know, it's, we, our manager starts talking about quantum physics. That in the world of the quantum, when your person can, can make, eliminate the ego and really be fully present, there's no, there's no difference between past, present, and future. There's no time, it's timeless. So you so, have it now. Yeah, when you connect to the oneness of the, of the universe, or oneness of God, oneness of the universe, when you connect to that oneness, you can get, you, you can achieve what you want a lot sooner because you're not bound by time. Mm -hmm. So maybe it sounds a little bit funny, spooky, or a little weird, but it is important because, again, as I said, just when you say it, when you feel it's something that's beyond, it's something that you can't really achieve, it's like something in the distant, you have no relevance to it, you're not connected to it, so how can I advance to that goal? But you know, if I keep telling myself, it's like affirmations, like, you know, we get along peacefully, we have a loving relationship, even if it might not be true yet, if you keep telling yourself that and you keep it it helps you want to get there and helps you align your thoughts, your speech, your actions with that. When I read this, when I think about the comment I'm gonna to make to you, and I say we have a loving relationship, wait a minute. If I make that comment, is that gonna bring me closer to having that loving relationship with you, or is that gonna bring me farther away? Mm -hmm. And when you start evaluating your your thoughts, your speech, your words, your your feelings based on your vision, you'll think twice before you start doing some of these things. And it's really about being more intentional about what you want and and then your daily activities that get you there or don't get you I there. I was just going to say intentional is the word because it helps you make decisions on a day-to-day -day basis, on a moment-to-moment -moment basis about am I working towards my goals or far, am I going farther away from my goals? So on a bad day when you really feel like snapping and if you can see the relationship vision that you have posted, let's say, in your bedroom or on the fridge, then you can kind of get a reset for a moment and and check yourself before you wreck yourself. If you've ever done any kind of manifestation work or even just written a vision or a, a mission statement for your business or any kind of goal setting, this is right up there with them um, with manifestation for your relationship. And you can, the sky's the limit. Like you can do anything uh, for your relationship. And it's a wonderful thing to do together, maybe every three months, six months, every year, right? To reassess, like, have we, wh what have we manifested so far? What are we still wanting to manifest? Were there things that we had written down that are no longer relevant? It just seems like a wonderful activity to do often on a date night or on a vacation. So when you really have time together and you're gonna commit yourself to planning how you wanna see your relationship. Yeah, and couples find it to be a very valuable exercise because it help, it forces them to really get clarity about what they want. Because it's really easy to just kind of go through life, even if your relationship is not in crisis. It's just so easy to go through life and just, you know, you forget about like, well, what about all the things that I want? I wanted for our relationship for, for my life. Like I'm just too busy with, you know, I'm working hard. I have to take care of the kids. When do I have time for, for the big picture? So taking a little bit of time to do this is really valuable um, in, in many ways. Yeah. It's hard to do it when you're just trying to get through the day to day grind because it is tiring to work all day, come home, be with the kids you know, have to be together and then go to bed. Like the days just slip on by. So having a vision for your future is a really nice, it's a really nice, uh, what's the word? Just pause in the, in the day to day. day, Mon day monotony of yeah. life. Yeah. yeah. It seems like a great way to do that. We actually created a, a past back and forth journal available on Amazon called the Couples Reconnection Journal. And no, it's called the Relationship Vision Couples Reconnection mm -hmm. Journal. And the whole purpose of it is 
to help you get to know each other and to have fun together and then to eventually craft your joint relationship vision uh, together so you have that written down. And writing it down is important. So Right, because otherwise it's like a jumble in your in your head in your head. When you write it down and you really speak it out into existence and you get clarity, it really is helpful in helping you move towards that goal. Yeah. And don't use it as a weapon. Don't be like come on, we have to do this and force your spouse to do it. Uh, and then it becomes another drag and another fight. Find a way when you're having some connected time, grab the journal off Amazon or take your own notebook and say, I'd really love to have a conversation about some of the things we dream about or we used to dream about. Can we, can we have a date to do that, right? Yeah, and when you do it, sky's the limit. Don't limit yourself. Don't think about like, well, we've never been able to do this or we'll never be able to. I'm not in the... What do you want an ideal? And sometimes people are in a situation where like, well, I don't know if even if I want this with you, but what would you ideally want in theory in a relationship? What would you want? Focus on that. You're saying even if they don't know if they're staying together? Yeah, even if you don't know if you're staying... So it's, it's a particularly difficult exercise when you have people that are not sure if they want to stay together. So it's like... Well, I don't know if I want a vision with you, but I want you to just think about what is it that you would want? What would the ideal relationship with you look like? With your partner look like? Oh, with, each it, other with look this like? person. Yeah. What would your ideal relationship, if it would be good, what could it look like? Because maybe you don't want the same thing, but maybe you do. And more often than not, you do want the same thing. Most people want the same. There's certain, there's certain hop on mission. Like, let's say people, I don't know, sometimes people don't want to have children. Other people want to have children. You know, that can be it. A very challenging issue and that can seem like an issue that's going to kind of make it or break it um, but you'll be surprised when people talk about these things and again it's all about being intentional it's all about talking about it and being clear about it and understanding each other because sometimes people have resistance to certain things because of because of fears or some type of other deeper issue and if you just get stuck on the surface level then it becomes a disagreement and when when you can be heard long enough by your partner, sometimes those fears will go away. So let's say you don't want to have children and your partner does, and you've never been able to talk about it. But if you finally sit down and talk about it face to face, eye to eye, looking into each other's you know, beautiful faces and one person shares and the other person can mirror back those fears without getting reactive, without being like, come on, when I met you, you said you were gonna have kids. Just repeating back what you heard. So what I heard you say is you don't want to have kids. Is there more? Sometimes mm. just the being heard can shift things. Actually, maybe maybe I'll have one kid, you know. <laughs> you know sometimes I mean, that's what That I... happens. And it's just because the person needed to, you or your spouse needed to be heard. And, val yeah, and, va and it's validating. Validating that it's okay. It's okay if you feel that way. I mean, I don't have to agree with you. I could have a different opinion, but it's okay that you have your feelings. And when people, as you said, when they feel heard, when they feel validated, they can soften up and be more flexible because some of it's just like a knee-jerk reaction. So when we're reacting like that, like for whatever reason, I don't, want, I don't want to have kids, it's coming from a very, you know, there's a lot of fear there. I, you know, whatever anxiety. The, anxiety. It's coming from, a, it's not necessarily coming from a full, fully integrated brain, but once the anxiety is spoken out and once they feel validated and it's okay for them to feel what they feel, sometimes there becomes more flexibility and less rigidity. And that goes both ends. It could go the other end, the person who wants to have kids. You know, both people have their their opinions and it becomes very rigid and it becomes a clash. And it would be a shame to make a decision about whether or not you're staying together out of that anxious place where you're not even speaking from a fully integrated brain. So a lot of times therapists will see a couple coming in, they don't want to have kids. And I'll see in different therapist forums that were part of, they're like, okay, the couple has to break up because they don't agree. And I'm thinking, wait, 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 wait. Like just because they're speaking about being on the opposite sides of an idea does not mean it's time to call it quits. We need to dive into this and have safe conversations around it. Right. And be, and be fully conscious, make a fully conscious decision because there will be, whether that issue or there are plenty of issues that couples can have that can feel like make it or break it, even though you should have known before we got married. But to be able to talk about it, to flesh it out, to really feel safe around, to feel validated, there's when people get to that place, there's usually more flexibility and it's usually easier to reach some type of decision, even a decision that 
you know, a novel decision that people never knew, thought about. You know, a lot of times I've had couples come, they said, you know, we've been married for 30, 40 years, and I never really understood why this bothers you until now. Mm-hmm. Finally got it. Or, oh, maybe we can do this. Like they come up with some new idea that they Completely never thought of. Completely new idea. Where did that come from? Because when people feel safe and they can fully integrate their whole brain, then they can access all the answers that they have. Higher thinking. And their higher, you know, higher thinking kind of just drops into their brain. The answer that they didn't have before, because when you're in stress mode, when you're in fear, when you're in survival mode, you cannot access that wisdom, your own wisdom, because you are too busy protecting yourself. And that's what happens in these hot button issues that they get in the way. Um, they make it very difficult to be able to come up with any creative solution. So that's why this exercise is really important because not only does it help you put it out on the table, even if you disagree, but it helps you talk about it. It helps you flesh it out and helps you hear each other and helps you feel validated. And then when that happens, there's more progress that can be made. So we're actually gonna challenge you right here and say, okay, maybe you clicked on this video because you think your goals just aren't in alignment and you're totally on two se- you know, ends of two different spectrums or ends of the spectrum than your partner. But really, we're gonna challenge you and say, you know what, take a deeper look into those goals with your partner. And you might see very clearly that after you have a safe conversation about it with no reactivity, with no shame or blame, criticism, negativity, you might feel so connected that you are actually in totally in line and those goals do not are no longer at odds with each other and it's really just the feelings of anxiety underneath it i'd really love to invite you to do this exercise with your partner and to see are you really on the same page or not with your goals and if you get tri- tripped up or you feel like wait a minute this is really like uh oh we're really like different please feel free to reach out to us because sometimes just getting professional help to work through it will help you, even if it looks on paper initially that you're in a different place. Having professional help to clarify, to talk about it, will help you realize that you're not so far off. And even if you're off on, far off on certain things, it not, it's not necessarily a deal breaker for you staying together and being happy. Definitely. And therapists watching take note of this and learn the imago dialogue process so you can help facilitate couples and not have couples constantly thinking that this topic is such a deal breaker we have to split so that's today's episode thanks for watching and we'll see you at the next one take care